Hello, welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna to take a look at the new iPhone 13. So I went with the smaller Pro model with 128 gig of storage, and I ended up going with a Sierra blue colorway because I thought it looked really nice in the photos. Just like last year, you have this super thin box that is just barely bigger than the footprint of the phone itself since you once again don't have an included charging brick. But unlike last year, you also don't see that plastic wrap that you usually see on the outside of an iPhone box. Instead, Apple opted for these two paper tabs on the bottom of the box itself, and these are gonna be used to seal it and indicate whether or not the phone has been opened before it came to you. And these paper tabs actually make the box and the packaging for this phone 100% recyclable, which is a great step towards that carbon neutral feature that Apple is working towards as a company, along with using the recycled materials inside the phone for the solder and the gold. But enough about the box, let's actually see what's inside of it. So when you open this up, you are immediately greeted by a massive camera bump. I think it's the largest of any iPhone so far. Here it is compared to the 12 Pro Max. And just for fun, here's what the camera on the iPhone 5S looks like compared to the new 13 Pro. I'm just gonna go ahead and take off the paper screen cover and turn on the phone. While it boots up though, we can take a look at what else we get inside the box. In typical Apple fashion, this is fairly minimal. You have some paperwork, a sticker that is unfortunately not the same color as the phone. That would have been super cool. You have a lightning to USB-C cable, and a SIM ejector tool because you need a way to put your phone number on this thing. But going back to the phone, I really like this new animation that greets you when you boot into iOS 15 for the first time. It's a really good user experience. All right, so I've been using this phone for a few days now, and I think that's good to give you my first impressions and what I've thought of the phone so far, but be sure to subscribe down below so you don't miss the full review when it does come out. All right, so right off the bat, I did notice two things about this phone that I thought were really nice, just immediate upgrades. First off is the notch, which is actually 20% smaller this year, but only horizontally. Vertically, in fact, I think it is just a little bit bigger. So when you have a video on in landscape, you can actually see the notch cut into the video just a couple of pixels, which once you notice is kind of hard to unsee. Also, even with the notch shrunk horizontally, you don't get anything extra. I'd really like the option to bring back the battery percentage in the status bar rather than having to swipe down into the control center. And the other thing I immediately noticed on this phone was the new screen. So this year the Pro lineup uses a uh, Super Retina XDR display with ProMotion. And I really wonder how many more words they can tack onto that. But this is the same screen that has been in the iPad Pro for a couple of years now. So this means the display can now refresh anywhere from 10 to 120 times per second, depending on what you're doing, of course. So if you're scrolling, it'll refresh faster compared to if you just have a static text that you're reading. And I just think this makes interacting with your phone that much more natural since everything is happening a little more quicker, it's a little more snappy. Also over this past weekend, I took a few photos using the new camera system on the iPhone 13 Pro, which Apple actually refers to as their biggest upgrade yet. Starting with the main wide camera, which is the one most people use, I think when you take photos, it's just the One X in the camera app. This now has a 25% larger sensor, along with an aperture that's down to 1.5 rather than 1.6 from last year. And this is just gonna help you get a lot more light into your sensor to get some better shots in low light situations. As for the telephoto camera, you now have a 3X optical zoom over the 2.5X from last year's Pro Max. And this might just be a slight increase, but it is nice to have a little bit more reach optically rather than using a digital zoom and your image just falling apart. The telephoto camera also supports night mode now, so you can get some better low light shots like you have been able to on the wide and the ultra wide previously. And speaking of the ultra wide, I saved that for last because it is arguably my favorite update to the cameras this year and honestly, maybe even the phone in general. Not only did the aperture on the ultra wide come down, so it's now an F1.8, they also added autofocus capability, which will now allow you to shoot macro. And I personally really enjoy taking macro photos because I find it to be a really fun angle. So being able to carry my phone around for that capability will be much more convenient than having this whole setup with me. But there is one issue with it. There's no button to switch to macro mode. You just get up to an object and when you're about 10 centimeters away, the phone will automatically switch to the ultra wide camera and enable macro mode. But once it does switch into macro mode, you'll have a minimum focusing distance of two centimeters so you can get really close up to different things and it'll be a really fun perspective. And I think Apple has said that they are going to add a setting in a future update to enable or disable macro mode. So that way you can still take photos with just the wide even at close distances. Along with this new hardware, you also get a few new software features. On the photo side, you now have photographic styles. And on the video side, you now get cinematic video and ProRes recording. So with photographic styles, you cannot tune the tone and the warmth that you get straight out of camera. And the good thing about this is these settings are saved for future use. So every photo you take will have these adjustments made and you don't have to worry about turning them on and off. 
What's nice about this is that it actually leverages the background computational photography that's being done when you take an actual picture and only apply the changes that you want to the parts of the picture that make sense. So this means the phone won't apply these changes to skin tones, which will keep them looking natural. And cinematic mode is pretty much just portrait mode, but in video. And it's really fun and it's really cool in the right scenario. It does require a ton of light, but I don't think it can replace a full camera anytime soon based off my initial testing. Also, it's capped at 1080p at 30 frames per second, which is kind of annoying, but it's okay. It's still fun to use. And the last new software feature for the camera is ProRes recording, which actually isn't available yet. It'll be a software update later in the future, but do keep in mind that it's it's capped at 1080p at 30 frames per second for the 128 gigabyte models, while the 256 gig and higher models can go up to 4K at 30 FPS. And it's kind of annoying that the lower storage model has this cap on the ProRes quality, but it is important to note that 4K ProRes at 30 frames per second takes up six gigabytes of storage per minute. And this is how long each storage option would last if you just straight recorded a ProRes video. And a couple more increases you get this year are the battery and the storage options. So for the storage options, you can now go up to one terabyte on the Pro models and 512 gigabytes on the regular iPhone 13 models, with the base storage being upped from 64 to 128 gig. And as for battery life, Apple is quoting a 2.5 hour increase on the Pro Max and a 1.5 hour increase on the smaller Pro, which actually gives the smaller iPhone 13 Pro a longer battery life than the iPhone 12 Pro Max was given, and that thing already lasted all day. And you get this increase in battery life through a combination of the A15 Bionic this year being more power efficient, and the fact that the actual battery is just a little bit bigger, which results in the phone being about 0.3 millimeters thicker and around 10 grams heavier than last year's models. And as for the aesthetics, by which I mean the color of this phone, I usually go for a black or a graphite, but I'm really glad I tried something new and went with the Sierra Blue. It almost seems like it's changing colors based off the lighting and the situation that you're in. Sometimes it looks gray, other times it looks like a really light blue. And I think this is really fun because it kind of changes it up. But worst case, if I ever get tired of the blue color, I can just put a case on it and cover it right up. All right, so that's all I have for you today. If you enjoyed this first look at the iPhone 13 Pro, be sure to like this video down below, it does help out. Also, be sure to go ahead and subscribe for the full review of this phone, along with more videos about tech, cameras, and making. Also, if there's anything you wanna know about this phone or something you want me to test, be sure to leave a comment down below and I'll try and include that in the next video. Here's my video about iOS 15, and here's the video that YouTube thinks you're gonna like the best.